So I'll go straight into it, starting off with Newmont. Obviously, we took out this descending. We know how the GDX and gold and silver look. So we're looking for a move back up to the new highs in gold. Silver would be good too. They'll probably go hand in hand. The next, yeah, the next resistance really is 41. I'm going to try and do an average between these two. Really a close above 41, I think, is what you would need to keep going. Yeah, 41 is resistance. After that, 42 point, let's say, 65, 7. You could even say 43. And after that, you have this nice 46 high. Those are the three levels to look out for next. And ultimately, you want to get to 55. And I think we will get there. I think the GDX and miners will pick up steam and start to run, even when gold is going sideways, or you could even have some red days in gold. The miners will start going up despite that, just to catch up, just to catch up. So a huge upside in Newmont. That's a big name. Downside, um, I guess the old low here will be your first test. We can actually take out the descending. It's actually done its job. <laughs> so I think <clears throat> you've got support around 37.5. 38 also, just in case, because quite a few times we came that low and held. So 37.5 slash 38. Once you close below 37.5, next level, honestly, it's probably going much lower. I can't imagine why that would happen, but you never know. Next level will be this breakout zone, 35.5. I think those are the only levels I need to really cover. You know, this one can go. So there you go. I can't see it going this low, 33, 35.5. In It's possible, improbable, but possible. And here, definitely possible. But for now, I do see the move up. The trend is your friend. The trend is definitely up. A lot of upside. Okay, next one, Barrett Gold. <clears throat> Barrett Gold. Yeah, this ascending one seemed to work quite well too, but I think that's just a coincidence. Um, okay, wow, lots of lines to remove. I haven't touched this chart in some time. This one can also go. There you go. Those are all the levels. Um, you can see this little zone that we're at right now is a mini level, but I think I'll leave it there. And this ascending, I don't think will count if we do go down anyway. So the, the drop... On the down, let's cover the downside first. I think so many, I mean, this is obviously a level. I just want to try and make an average, which in all these times they, they intersect with the candles that come across it. 16, let's call it 16 as a level on the way down. After that, yeah, 15.5, 15.2. It's hard to tell exactly. I can see why I've got all these lines. That's just too many. I almost have to make a decision. I'm more inclined to go with, with this. Something like this. Let's try and make an average between all three of these. There you go. Those are levels. So here, 15, 15.5, 16 on the way down and on the way up. Honestly, this on the way up, if you would want to sell this, I'd probably take a small nibble just out of, General principle, yeah, 18.5, 18.5, basically this high here. I mean, it was a bit crazy because gold's making new highs and it came all the way back down. So it had to have a, a weird candle, but ultimately 18.5 was the level. And next time you go up there, it'll take a few days, one, two, three, maybe. And we're testing 19, obviously 19 is a level two because that's the old height that we just put in. So you could actually add that one. At that point, just like the GDX, it will come across this descending. So you would actually encounter this descending resistance too. And just above that, for Barrett Gold at least, you've got 20, big round number and also resistance. So I know it doesn't make the, ch the chart too pretty, but I think these levels are worth keeping in. You know, three zones on the way down, three zones on the way up, four actually. But I think they'll they'll they're, they're relevant in case you want to use them tactically. Eighteen point five, nineteen. Then it depends, but it's the big descending. That's a huge one, but that's the same as GDX. And then for Barrett Gold, you got twenty. I guess you've also got twenty. Now at that point, you're just breaking out. Sorry, you're breaking out. The next level will be like twenty five. Yeah. Okay. Can you go equal? This one's super strong. 
broke out of its descending long ago. This one's been strong since 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 a long time ago, especially down here. This is before the breakout in the metals or the miners. And it just keeps going up. Look at this close. You know, look at Thursday's close was quite good too. Friday's close was really good. I mean, Monday next week, it's just probably gapping up uh, straight away and making new highs. So where do we go? I'm not, I don't even want to cover support because it's just so strong. I'll just put that there though. Um, all right, let's cover resistance first. I go, it's obviously worth covering support just in case. Resistance, I'm inclined to go with a little bit of a higher resistance just because of how strong it is. I mean, how much of a move is it from where we are to where I thought resistance would be 66? That's three, three and a half percent. That's quite easy. We're in a bull market. This is the strongest one. It's a senior. <clears throat> I'm inclined to go with the absolute 5% move. Go on. There you go. There you go. 67 for Nico Eagle. If you have gold moving up <clears throat> to 2,400, I have to pause and think about that number sometimes. You know, if you're above 2,400, the GEX is up 2%. I'm sorry, Nico Eagle can probably muster a bit more than 65, 66. So I'm going to place it here. I wouldn't normally do. I'd probably normally leave it there, actually, 66, because that's where it, it intersects on all those days. Also, that was the high, like, well, that was the candle high on this day and here. So actually, 66 is the level, but I'd be a bit bold and go for 67. After that, <laughs> after that, you're pretty much closing the gap straight away. So I wouldn't care about the gap close. I'd go for the next major move, which is 72. That's quite a big move also. 7% has to be respected. I mean, this is going to make new all-time highs, right? It is going to test its old highs of, of basically just 90, just below 90. But it's about nibbling on the way up in case there's a surprise drop. So yeah, 67, I think it can be, it can be done. You can be greedy. Then I think it's time to slow down a bit. It's 72.5, actually. I can move this down just a little bit, just to be sure. And once you nibble that, then you're okay to not care about 74. Now we're really talking 15, 20% higher. I'm going to leave it there, right? That's like next week. I don't see next week I was going to 70. I don't see that happening. So there you go. Those are the two levels for now. But honestly, the next one, I would move it all the way up to 76. On the way down, I mean, first of all, this is support. 60, big round number. Held it for like two weeks or something. After that, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be around here. I'm not sure where exactly. 57, 56 point something. I'll just do 57 because it's so strong. It's better to make sure you get it than to miss it by a couple of cents. And after that, I just can you imagine the reasons for this to be like massive flooding and volcanoes erupting underneath its mines, but 54, that's irrelevant. And you know what? This descending is, is completely past its expiry date. Okay, next one is Pan American Silver. This one has been doing quite well. Broke out of this descending, which to be honest, we can now delete. And now it's just stuck between these horizontal lines. So top side resistance, I got 2050. Bottom is what we just checked a few days ago. That's 1820, just pretty much 1800, just above 1800. And now we're in the middle of no man's land. <laughs> I think we're looking for a break out or breakdown. I think we're more likely to get a break out. This would really require silver testing 30, probably closing above 30. But once that happens, once you have a close above 30 on silver, Pan American silver should be pretty much 21 bucks. And then off it runs. Let's zoom out and see where the next resistance is. I think that's too close. It could really get going, like at least 10%. Imagine how wild silver would probably go to 32, wouldn't it? So that would be at least... I feel like saying 24... I mean, the first stop is really this 2170 zone, maybe 22, maybe $2 increments, a bit like silver, actually. All right. So after we take out this 2050, I would say, God, it's difficult, but it doesn't matter. We keep going. Say so something like this is the next level, which should easily be taken out. 
And then you're really looking at something like, yeah, something like this. Let's just zoom out. I mean, imagine $30 silver, you should be up here, really, 30s. And ultimately, look at this descending. That will come into play at some point. How much of a move from where we are now? That's not a lot, 25%. That's more like it, like a run past 30 in silver, up to 34. I really would expect Pan American silver to really catch up. And then move towards 40, 50, for sure, for sure. Okay, let's leave it like that for now. That's on the way up, on the way down. Yes, you got the prior support, so 1800, 1820, let's say. And then after that, the all important 1700 that we didn't break out of for a long time. That would be a great support. Maybe we find support just above that 17, maybe just below, but I'm going to leave it at 17. And below that, I don't think we're going to get there. So that's Pan American Silver. Very simple horizontals. I think the descent, the the sloping trend lines are not relevant anymore. So good sign of maturity. Next one, SSRM. <coughs> okay. This one looks good. So it hasn't done that well compared to the others, but that's because it was on the mend, let's say. It was even descending whilst others were breaking out. But then since we had this break out of the descending, my favorite, look at this, bam, straight up the five bucks. Then we kept going, retested five, so five dollars is support. After that, might as well continue with the the analysis of the support on the way down. I would say I can't see it going below five actually, not anymore anyway. I guess this four seventy zone. I'll leave it there. I don't really see it going lower, and if it does, then I'll analyze it when it happens because this is a bit special. I don't think it follows too much gold and silver actually. It does its own thing, but I think it wants to go up. And then when gold and silver are going up and the miners, of course, then that's the perfect catalyst. So next stop, I'm just going to really cover the, the resistance on the way up. Old high, 550. We're going to take that out on Monday, even if gold and silver are down. I just feel like that's what it wants to do. It's the best close so far, right? It's kind of matching this one but with a better candle. And uh, next stop, honestly, I mean, I know this one by heart. There's no resistance. Until about, yeah, I put it in already, 7.50. Now, that doesn't mean we get there in one go, but I do think we're going to get there quite quickly. I also added these descending ones, something that maybe other people have forgotten about, but that comes into play. So maybe we encounter the descending before we hit the, the horizontal at 7.50. So you can see why I think 7.50 just above 750. It's the lowest part of this support zone. Now we did crash right through it when we started to flush from 10 bucks or just 950 on that bad news. We did open above it, but we just kept on going. So on honestly, on the way up, it's going to be these horizontal lines and these sloping ones that I've already put in there. So I think once you get to nine or 10, you you will encounter severe resistance, but we're we're a hundred percent away from there. So let's see what it looks like. Let's just do a bit better job. So I have two sloping lines. I don't know which one comes, will be the real one. Maybe both will. So we'll keep going. And honestly, when there's nothing ahead of you, I just do 50 cent increments. So already we've got 550, which is a real resistance, which kind of proves how the 50 cent increment works. After 550, six. After six, 650. After 650, seven. After seven, 750, where I expect first real resistance however it depends how long it takes because maybe before we get to 750 we encounter this descending one here so do you see what i mean it's from here slopes down now this one's better because it 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 takes into account a longer timeline not that much longer but it doesn't intersect towards the end so i'm not sure about this one i'm actually more sure about this one but I left them both in, both in there because, you know, I don't know. And I just want to be sure. So and maybe something coincides at the same time. Maybe gold at that point is at 2,500 and it's looking like it's going sideways and edging towards a flush. So maybe that would intertwine with one of these particular trend lines. So there you go. 50 cent increments after 550. But pay attention to the sloping ones. That's my answer for resistance. Otherwise, honestly, this gap fill, we're, we're far from this. But once you get to this 950 zone... 
gap is filled, I would sell that. Although this one, where does it deserve to be? It deserves to be higher than 13. Because we were going down, you know, gold and silver looked like they were going lower. And then this just kept on going down. I said it was a buy at 10. And then you had this surprise mine collapse in Turkey. And it becomes an absolute steal. And that's when I enter. But the point is, it was worth, it should be worth more today than it was worth during this period. I know they lost a mine, but I still think it was worth more even back then. So this definitely has room to run. Okay. Now that's the seniors done. I'm going to move to royalties, wheat and precious metals. This one, let me reset the charts. This one's done very well. I remember this flush down here on good news. They announced that they should be 50% higher in the next five years, something like that. Good news to me, but down it goes. Okay, fine. Well, we'll pick it up down here. I did support, kept on going. I'd sold what I bought there because it didn't, make, didn't look like gold was going to do a massive breakout. And we'd already done a full recovery of the bad news collapse. And then it was the descending, all these trimmings, constantly trimming. But as it goes up, it ends up being worth more than all the trimmings I've taken out. And here we've gone all the way up. I mean, it's really strong all the way up to here. So now we've taken out this high, you know, a bit of sideways action. Up we go. And then look at this. This is the gold crazy blow off day. But back we come. It just looks like it wants to go higher. Now, if I zoom out, I got this ascending resistance, which is extremely rare. And I rarely look out for it. Maybe it exists more, more often than I can identify. But I see it here. But I don't think it really matters. I think Wheaton is just going to keep going up because these royalties are going to make so much money. You know, some of the deals they have with a lot of the companies they own, let's say, uh, where they pick up royalties from, I mean, it's just going to get they just make so much money as, as the price goes up, as the miners make more and more money. So I don't see how they'll care much about my technical levels. And what do we have next? Uh, that's incidentally another ascending resistance. I think that one, you can see why I decided to keep it. So resistance on the way up. Honestly, this one I can delete. <laughs> this ascending... I mean, it looks good, but maybe it's obsolete. I'll give it another week. I'll give it another week. But otherwise, next resistance, well, the old high that we just made, first of all, which is 54 point something, right? 54.3. I'll make it straight later. After that, next stop is going to be, you can see actually this 54.3. It's kind of where these candles here were topping out. There is another one up here. 55.5. I'm going to put it in there. I know it sounds a bit dramatic to have another one, but it really is the last high before the all-time high. So I might as well, on this one, I'll extend a bit, make it a bit less old. But that's the all-time absolute high of wheat and precious metals. And there's no reason why we shouldn't be there or even higher already. So as gold makes new highs, I expect this to go up. And then after that, I'll keep this ascending because that's probably where it's going to find a bit of resistance because at that point it's it's no man's land so beautiful now on the way down i almost don't want to cover on the way down on the way down it'll be this one yes it was resistance should be support maybe i can move it up just according to the latest candles here you can see 51 let's call it 51 actually doesn't matter 51 after that it'll be the low of these candles and this, I don't think, will be the case. And I'm just going to leave it like that. Obviously, if we were to flush below 49.50 or 50 alone, uh, it will settle somewhere, maybe 46. But I don't see that happening, so I'm not going to bother putting in some lines. I'll try and clean up some of these charts, actually. I just don't need some of these lines anymore. This one also... <laughs> So there you go, those are levels. Next one, uh, Franco Nevada. I keep forgetting that one in my video, so checking my little checklist on the left. <clears throat> right, Franco Nevada has a lot of catching up to do. This one got smashed. Panamanian operations. Um, forgot what it was, actually, but down it went. Now, this is an absolute monster. It deserves to be very high. Like wheat and precious metals, it's far from its highs of 170-ish. <clears throat> but you can see it's just about to break out of this descending. And once it does, it should really accelerate and catch up along with the others. So 
I mean, these are nice trend lines that they've broken out of here. But I don't know if it's really broken out yet. I'm going to keep the descending because it still hasn't done it. But what we want is a close. Yeah, above this one here now. Right, 124, let's call it. A close above 124 and then up we go. Up we go. I just don't know whether we go to 126 or 128. Might just go straight past both and keep going at that point, which is hard to call actually. It's going to have to stop off somewhere. 140 is a nice number, but is that really resistance? I feel like 128. One, this one's really hard. It has lots of little levels. It's like even this level here, you know, I was looking at this earlier. <clears throat> At the moment, one, two, four is the high. Then you got this high that we got to on the first bounce from this flush, one, two, six. So I feel like one, two, six is a mini level. But then again, one, two, eight is where we collapsed from. So I would probably just machine gun like one or two percent, one or two percent, one, one or two percent. And then I'd leave it for a long time. And then once we near 140, I don't know if it's 138, 140, I think, several candles there. I start selling another round. So like all these three levels would be one zone to sell. And then that'll be another. So I'd probably do 2%, 2%, 2%, or, or one and a half, one and a half, two, something like that. And then leave it, depend on gold, silver, and the miners index in general. And then here I do another sort of like 4% or 5%. So overall it's 5% here and 5% there. Something like that. <clears throat> so combine it with 10% average, you know, one, three, four. But then again, the value of, of Franco Nevada as it goes up will be more. I would have made more than 10%. So everything I've sold will have been accounted for in, in the in the value increase during this move up. So overall, it, I mean, it's it's wonderful stuff. You can't lose. I'm going to leave that in for now. I'll add another one, which is a bit more obvious up here. I think by then, given the time element, you'd start to hit resistance here on this major descending. Franco Nevada is quite hard to call. Now, on the way down, the descending is irrelevant. I think it's going to be the old low that we've hit many times. That's this one here, 114. And after that, well, hopefully 112 holds, and then we're back at the lows. I don't see how that can happen, but I'll leave it in because, because I'll clean this one up maybe later. But it doesn't really need too much cleaning up. There you go. That's Franco Nevada, Metalla. I haven't looked at Metalla actually since before my holiday. Pretty weak though, isn't it? This should be all the way in the 350, 360 zone. Hmm. Close at low of day. I don't understand why this one's that weak. I mean, this is a royalty which is seriously undervalued. And it's a good one too. Um hmm. I wonder if this is even a level. It looks like it is a, I feel like it closed on a level just because of how many times there. It's hard to call. Then, yes, this is the next move down. That's the low we hit last time. Wow, that's right below $3. You don't want that to happen. But if Metallic got, goes below $3 with the gold price where it is now, imagine a drop. That is weak. This one I can leave. This one I can leave. Or extend, who knows? You could be surprised by Metalla. I hope that was some weird illiquidity close because this should really be taken out 350 and, and even 360. So yeah, I'll leave this as it is for the support on resistance for sure. 350. Clearly, that was resistance before these candles existed. Now it's definitely resistance. And you can see why I left this 365-ish high. That's the absolute high from this period. Once we take that out, and by the way, I can remove this descending. <clears throat> then we visit old support up here, which is basically $4. So the rest, I think I agree with. Nothing to change there, but not the most reassuring close, I must admit. Right, next one is First Majestic. Now we're moving on to the silver ones. <clears throat> uh -huh. Big drop. Big drop. Horrible close, despite gold and silver doing quite well, and the miners. Definitely underperforming the sector. Definitely capable of going lower. Now, I believe this is because 
bad uh, drill results, something like this, first Majestic. So that would explain it. It's a shame because it had so much strength. And I think it was going to be one of those ones that, that retraces and then just squeezes and goes back to new highs. It's a total silver squeeze candidate. But that, you know, that really ruined the momentum, the news that came out. And you can see it wants to go lower. So we'll cover support first for me. And by the way, I have not bought back anything. It's because I was on holiday, but it was also because I trimmed very small amounts. And I wanted the big, and I also bought some nice gold bullion. Uh, with some savings that I'd had. And I thought it's a good hedge trade because in that case, I bought on the way up. It's kind of like where the price is now. So I thought if things keep going up, great. I just bought a decent amount of gold. If things go down, good, because I haven't bought back any miners yet. So it's kind of a, a hedge trade within the sector. Uh, but yeah, you know, one of the ones I'm looking at is First Majestic because I know that one. And also I'm looking at my talent now, but... I don't like the weakness of Metalla. First Majestic, I understand. Anyway, I'll decide what to buy and when. I'm certainly not now. I'm looking for a big retracement. If it doesn't happen, I I just keep my hot my sidelines as it is. But if there's a drop in gold, silver, first majestic can definitely keep going down. First stop 640, 650 actually. If it keeps going lower then this is sending, not all of the stocks have an ascending support, but I did notice one in First Majestic. Let's go to the one hour chart, maybe that makes it a bit better. So where would that be? That'd be something like, ah, that could end up being a nice big round number, like $6. All right, let's go back to daily. Now, so if 650, then six bucks don't hold, then Honestly, 580 or 560, you know, this zone, that the high, kind of the high of the above average high of these candles, sort of 560, 580 or something like that. And I'll leave it as it is. That would really surprise me if we go that low. But actually, if you do have a collapse in the metals, definitely you could have an over-exaggerated drop where we basically undo the whole pop of First Majestic. So it could even be this part here. This is the gap close move here. So $6, actually. Six and just below six. I'm just going to circle it because I'm not sure where it would be, but something like, I don't know, like this zone. Yes, just below this. Is a, and then what I would expect is it goes below... And then it pops back up and closes on a daily close above the ascending support. But even if it doesn't, I think it would sort of still recover and, and go back up. Because because other, it, if we do come that far down, that's like a drop of 30% for a stock in the bull market uh, whose sector has just entered a new bull market. So <clears throat> I would definitely be looking at First Majestic to buy back into if we start going below 650. Right, next one is Fortuna. I deleted that one too. All right, Fortuna. I mean, look at the difference, right? You can see straight away how much of an underperformance First Majestic is in. Very nice. It's kind of following the, the Seal J, Silver, and the Miners. So this makes sense. I think it's almost outperforming a little bit, actually. But look, it's maintained this move up. It's kind of one of the best closes in a while. Next stop is 490. Let's let's deal with the upside resistance because that's where it wants to go. Um, this I don't care where it came from. Okay, that makes sense. But either way, there's a new support, and that's the low of these candles. So that's 440. And after that, yes, it's kind of Ah, yeah, 415, 420, whatever. That, I'll do resistance for now. So after taking out 490, yeah, I don't really see anything. 550, see you later. Another 10% move. Normally, I would say 5 bucks, but 490 is the same as 5 bucks. Then you've got these highs over here. You see these candles, the 520. It's normal, actually, that you, you encounter resistance at 520 after taking out 5. See what happened here. It's kind of here, 520. You see, it, it tries, it's 516 failed. 
518 back down, 518 back down, comes back up again, 518, 519, 520, bam, squeezes to 550. So it's not that I like adding lines just for the fun of it, but it could be that 520 is actually a resistance also after 490, if you see what I mean. And then you got the high of 550 and then yeah, then prior support from way back when becomes resistance. And this is pretty much six bucks. But you can see why I left it at 590 just because of the, the tails here. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Let's reset the chart, see what that looks like. Yeah, well, it is what it is. And for support, uh, yes, you have 440. Comes back down, you got this old resistance. It could be a bit lower actually. And then this, I don't see why that's anything. You can see why I had it before. Yeah, you know, you could just have a drop between four and 420. I'm gonna move this down a little bit, just to 410, make it a bit of an average. So plus minus 10 cents either way. And then here, ah, it's just not as obvious. It's kind of like the support of this zone. All right, I'll leave that as it is. I don't see us going back down. They've had good news recently. They've got good momentum. And I do think still we're going to go for, 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 for 30 bucks. I'll leave that. That's not really too much of an interference. Right, next one is Coeur d'Arlene, my favorite. <clears throat> but not as strong as Fortuna, although it is stronger than First Majestic. I don't know if it's had any news, but this one is a monster, an absolute monster on the way up. Now, it did have a crazy move on the way up, as expected. A little blow off top. And now it's consolidating quite far away from its old high of sort of 550, right? So what was this? Oh, yeah, this was good resistance. You could see, okay, we'll readjust it to 550. And we won't make it that bold. Otherwise, I'll think there's something special about it. This line is obsolete. Look at this huge range, 550 on the way up, or well, just below 550, 545. Now on the way down, where's support? Well, I guess it's gonna be the low of this candle. That's a gap. You don't really wanna start going into this gap zone, but for now we're holding, we could definitely go back up. Now I'm looking for psychological numbers, five bucks. I don't see it. I don't see anything. I see nothing between 450 and 550. Nothing obvious. Like a close above this 470 would really suggest we're going past five. I think you just need to watch silver. That simple. Um, or 20 small level of support. I'll leave that as it is. Four, four bucks is basically your level of support. After that, it's the gap close. I just do it there like this. And then after that, honestly, quite hard to call. I'll just leave that like that. I don't see us going all the way down unless the metal's really turn and ready to flush. But cut down then we just need that little that signal that it's ready to just go back up because then it will look really bullish again. Because then you can start looking above 550. What's after 550? Because this is a huge resistance, right? I mean, look at this. After this resistance, where, where do we go next? Well, I was looking at six bucks because of support from here. And it probably would hit six bucks and, and just go sideways a bit. But after that, it's really 750. There's nothing else for me. So I would love Carl Darlen to to go back up and test 550. And it's definitely capable of doing it. Right, next one is Discovery, the one that I had high hopes for. Failed me, but then came back and reasserted itself. It was really since this breakout, there's a monster move. 50 cents all the way to 70 something, huge. And that's 50% move straight away in like one week, one and a half weeks. Then retraced, held the 65 zone, very nice. I love these levels. Bounce, and now look at this, Friday, close at 74, best close ever, <clears throat> ever, even if you include the red days. And now, 
Next stop is this high, which is 76, 77. Same thing, especially when you have an illiquid stock like this. I think we could take this out on a bad day. I think it's just the type of stock that doesn't care. So, and I think it's going to be a good day anyway. But Monday, Tuesday, we could easily see it closing above 77. And next stop is, for me, 88. 88, but that's not even the strongest resistance. To... Then it's one buck, one, one buck, one dollar. So that's what I see on the way up. 77, 88. And I might as well say 99 to keep the pattern going. And after that, 1, 116, the old high up here. And that is a massive move from under 50, under 50 cents all the way to 115. Huge, huge move. And it's capable of doing it very quickly. So next week, I expect uh, new highs in Discovery Silver. On the way down, it'll be 65 cents. Then 60 and then four, I mean, 50 cents should be really strong. I can delete some of these now with the sending. I can delete. There you go. Discovery really looks good. Mm -hmm. Next one, EXK. This one hit the resistance all the way up here. Horizontal and psychological resistance. And the descending maybe didn't hit it yet, but maybe I was off by mm -hmm. one millimeter. And maybe it was supposed to be one or two millimeters lower, but... Either way, there's three resistances. There's the horizontal, the descending, and the psychological number. So not too surprising that it sold off there. I was nibbling here out too, but I was nibbling also here. And I think I even nibbled here. But otherwise, I held since the low down here, but I didn't add. This one scared me. I was expecting worst case scenario. I could have made a lot more if I'd added down here. I think my last add was sort of 2.30. Pretty much where I did my first sell. Um... But anyway, who cares? Definitely making money now. Back in the black on EXK270. Though I trimmed, I didn't buy anything back. I haven't bought anything back. So what do I expect now? Depends on silver. Um, this can go. It's now obsolete since we've gone above it and gone below it since. So support is going to be the low of this period, which is just where it is. So support is going to be 25 Nice round number. Resistance is going to be three. Nice round number. If we close above this high, 313. Uh, actually, I'm going to say 313. Then it's, it's also $3. Now, if you want to trade this one again, um, then sell at 299 But otherwise, if you close above 313, you have serious potential of just going all the way up here. I know the descending is there, but imagine how long it takes to do it. It takes one or two days, maybe three and you're basically there. It's the same level. The horizontal and the descending will be the same area of resistance. So let's just say close above 320 would really confirm it. Bam, up you go to 390. That's another 20% move from 320 to 390. So big potential. And this definitely has the recent history of a stock that moves. So I think it, it, would, it could do it. Now on the way down, you lose 250. I think this is... Decent support, T30. If you lose that, then $2, which point you're retesting the descending. Interesting. This one I can delete. It looks good, but it's no longer relevant. There you go. That's EXK. Really, really has made up for its poor performance. And I think it could really keep going. Just need silver, obviously. Next one is Mag Silver. This one was the worst performer along with EXK. Then EXK really bounced hard. MAG didn't, but actually, you know, it did sort of do this move, but then it just all of a sudden popped. So now it's starting to, I don't want to say out EXK, EXK, but it's starting to move also. Let's try and readjust some of these trend lines. Uh, descending, I'm going to leave because it could back test it. This one's irrelevant. This one I'll leave. Mm. See, this one was recently relevant, but because of what's happened, we pumped above it, below it, back up above. Doesn't count anymore. This was the next resistance I had. All right, well, I don't care if it looks dirty. I'm just going to do it anyway. This one I would like to get out of, but I'm in no hurry. You know, in my notes, I still have this big red mark next to it, which suggests liquidate it and buy something else instead. But... You know, it's up 2%. It's kind of better than most of the other ones. 
So it's not doing that badly right now. So I'll keep it. Support is going to be this, the low of the last period, 1150. Resistance is the higher the, the recent period, which is 1290, same as 13 bucks. If we take this out, then I do expect 1350, 50 cent increments should be resistance anyway. But here we've got this. For me, this is small resistance. I'll leave it there. The next real resistance would be up here. 1450 that I expect to be much stronger than 1350 it's not just further away but it was resistance on a on more periods more 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 uh yeah more periods different times here on support for example it was it was support and then here was resistance so 1450 for me is more pronounced as a level and 1350 and then after that yes this high up here 17 bucks maybe 1650 but that's far away so I'll, I won't care about that if we lose 1150 does the descending act as a retest for support maybe I'll leave it if we lose that then then 10 bucks actually I don't think we'll go to 980 because we're in a bull market let's move that up to 10 bucks otherwise you'll miss it if you feel like buying it and I don't care about anything below that because I don't even think mag can go below Right, that's mad. Let's look at Aris Mining. <clears throat> this one is probably the best at the moment in terms of its close from Friday. Look at this. It's taken out its high from all of this period. Now, it's a little... I mean, the, the spread sometimes ruins, you know, and I mentioned that a few times, like this candle here is ridiculous. It was a green day, but it just looks like it had a really bad low of day, but it, it didn't. It's just to spread some fake money market spread or whatever you want to call it. Either way, this is a clear bullish Friday close, almost closed above. <laughs> Sorry, almost closed above four bucks. That was at 394. Next stop, I don't see anything except 480. I know that's really far away, but... I mean, it's 20% move, but I really don't see, I don't even see like 420 here. You can see with support. Maybe you could say 420, but I just, maybe, maybe. But I don't see $4 as, as a resistance. And I think Monday we're going to be going straight through $4 anyway. I'll leave 420 just because for some reason it caught my eye. Just this support here, one, two, three, and then we lost it. We tested a little bit. It's hard when it's very wide spreads between the bid and the ask, and it's a bit illiquid. It's hard to call the exact levels, but I think it is a bit of a stretch from from where we are now, just on a four to four eighty with no level. So I'll th I'll leave four twenty in, but really I see nothing till four eighty support. Um, well, not this. It's too close, and we were trading straight through it every day. So I'm just going to leave prior resistance, like kind of here-ish. 350, go on, nice round number. 350, after that, yeah, 320. After that, two, eight, I don't see $3, uh, but I do see the ascending. So maybe the ascending comes into play before this horizon. There you go. Those are all the levels. Two on the way up, three on the way down, plus one ascending. Next one, I am gold. So this one, this one I chased, uh, three hundred five and two ninety five. Yes, it's doing nicely up, up twenty percent or maybe more. Now resistance, resistance. Um, yes, this level was definitely resistance, but we've taken it out, and once we march back up, although it was resistance all of this week, three eighty. I'm gonna move it up three ninety. Not that I'll be selling three eighty. I haven't sold any of this. You know, my my average is three bucks or three hundred one. I think if you include commission. But I'm not looking to sell this for months, and I think it has great potential. I think that three ninety will be taken out next week if gold and silver oblige. And once you're trading above four or three ninety, um. Hmm. Well, I see one level straight away. That's this here, 440. And I could say 429. This was already accounted for. That's $4. I feel like saying 440. 
I'm looking for any extra confirmation. Like here, the high of here, 430. I could say 435 is a bit of an average between 440 and this 430. Yeah, it's like between 430. Can you see that here? Four, this is $4, right? After that, you got nothing until pretty much here and here. So I'm going to make an average. You know what? I'm a bit bullish. I'll say 440. After that, you got these areas here. That's 460, 460 for some reason. I don't care. Up you go. I might trim this first small amount, but I don't want to because I need at least six months so I don't pay taxes. I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I'll trim the others if I feel like the mine is going to go down. Okay, I'll leave it. So 440, just an FYI for myself. Otherwise, up we go to 540, 530. And then after that, okay, we'll take a look after that. But I think this definitely can hit seven bucks this year. Very optimistic. Next, SBSW. This one, I think it has some bad news. What do they have? They're cutting some staff or something. It's a shame. Look at that. 580 again, resistance. Perfect resistance. So that worked. Then down we went to next. I think real support was here, actually. That was the real level. And now look at this close at low of day on a Friday. I had this as prior level. Didn't count too much on the way up, but on the way down, maybe. Maybe. This could easily go back down to 480. And then if it starts to trade below that, I mean, I don't see it going to four bucks. But honestly, this should turn around and go back up. I don't care about the news. I thought a lot of the news was priced in. And I think when you cut workforce, if that really was the news, that's usually should be bullish. I know they've got some issues, but I didn't expect I didn't expect it to be this week. Palladium was uh, is OK. It looks like it could go back up. So this one, I actually have faith that it will go back up. But, you know, I recognize that it closed the low day and very close to this level. I've just looked at, actually, this level's $5. What am I talking about? $5. So close to the big round number. I'll just leave it there. But it could go back to 480. Would I buy back in? It's too risky, this one. You know, if it was a Newmont or a Gnico Eagle, maybe. But SPSW is a bit of a... It's, I, I think it will go up. I think even Rick Rule likes it a lot, but... I've got sufficient in there. I don't know. Maybe I'll add a little bit. Maybe. I just don't feel the need to do it, let's say. Okay, finally, GLGDF. The last one from my portfolio. Look at that. Boom. This one I did trim at 112. By the way, I want to get rid of it for ages. I think my average is 126. I think I took out a fifth at 112 which is more than i usually do right normally i do five percent ten percent max hardly ever but this is one that i don't like and want to get out of and i just thought i'd sell this one rather than the others when i thought the the market was a bit toppy and plus it was clear resistance so i just trimmed at 112 automatically i'm not buying back if it goes back up to 112 i won't be selling again i've already sold that range i'd only do that if i really thought the market would drop uh, so this one, I'll let it go. Next level, 130. I wouldn't be selling 130 because I think taking this out, 115, which it hasn't done, right, which is why I sold it. I didn't expect it to do it so easily. But if we can go back up, which I think we're actually going to do, uh, I do expect it to go right past 130 and maybe higher. And I don't see why I should change any of these lines because we haven't been there since I last drew them. Now, on the way down, the descending, a retest that we support, this low, that would be support. I don't expect it to go down there. And then down here, also where we are, pretty much $1. That should be also support, but I don't care. I'm not buying back. Right, that's all my stuff. Those are my stocks. I want to chop up my videos a bit more and take a break. So I'll end it here, and I'll do the subscriber, the, the other ones, such as Eldorado, Heckler, B2 Gold, Kinross, Equinox, Goldfields, Nova Gold, Harmony, Anglo Gold, and let me know if there are any others you want me to look at that are not on this list. Um, well, that are not on the list of the video I'm about to do. So I'll post this one. Hope you find it of value.